The uh, Royal Rumble was also in the news quite a bit this week. There were rumors that the Rumble is being expanded once again, only the second time in history, to a 40-man field. Uh, That was in some of the reports from people who were allegedly at the SmackDown tapings in Philadelphia. I I think uh, Philly has the Rumble in January, so people were saying there was an announcement made that it's going to be a 40-man Rumble. I heard that from a lot of different places. I have yet to hear it confirmed by WWE. So I don't know if this is true or if this is just someone peddling bullshit, but that's the rumor that the Rumble is going back to 40 men. Uh, So we'll see. We'll see if that actually happens or not. The last one they did like that was in 2011. Alberto Del Rio won that. I thought the ending of that one was great when Santino popped up out of nowhere. The people were going nuts. They really wanted to see him win. And in the end, he fell short. Uh, That was also the year, if I remember, that Booker T came back, and I think Kevin Nash as Diesel, which got a huge reaction. So that Rumble had some good moments. I was not a fan of the 40-man format. That's just too many people. Uh, They also cut down on the length of time between each entrant. I think it was like 60 seconds between each person. It was just going way too fast for me. And 40 men, way too much filler. You talk about a normal 30-man Royal Rumble being bullshit because we all know who's going to win... A 40-man Rumble is going to be even worse. Because basically, if you look at the Royal Rumble coming up in 2015, if guys are back from injury, you may have Roman Reigns back, Daniel Bryan, plus you'll have some other guys in there as well, some other main event names, maybe Batista. You could have, conceivably, two or three different people who could win that Royal Rumble match, which would be great, because normally it's only one. So we may have two or three coming up next year. What about the other 37 bodies in there? They're just there for filler. Kofi Kingston will be in there to do his annual spot where, you know, uh, how's he going to get back in the ring? And and that's fine, and everyone has their role, but 40 men, when only two or three have a realistic shot of winning to me, is a waste of time, and I would prefer that they actually give these guys 90 seconds or two minutes between entrances the traditional way. Otherwise, it just moves at too fast of a pace, and, you know, it just becomes all about the entrances and who can they stick in there. And, and none of those guys have any chance of even being there at the end. So what's the point? I, I am not a fan of the 40-man format. I would prefer they keep it at 30. Um, and speaking of the Rumble, Brock Lesnar. I've seen reports that he may not work another match until the Royal Rumble in January. Uh, look, People are taking Brock Lesnar to task. Oh, what a horrible champion he is. Don't blame Brock Lesnar. Blame WWE. They're the ones booking the guy. I'm sure Brock Lesnar would be more than happy to work one or two more pay-per-views to work Survivor Series if they wanted him to, provided they pay him. He'll gladly work whatever show they want to work if you pay him what he's what he's asking for. If they don't want to pay him because they're they're cutting the budget, that's not his fault. That's WWE's fault. They could have him for any show they want. They are making the decision. They are making the choice not to bring him in if this is true. Until January. Don't blame Brock. Blame WWE for that. And people saying, well, he's got to go down as one of the worst champions of all time. Look, I wish we saw Brock more often as well. I I wish he was wrestling on this show. Killing John Cena inside the cell. So that Dean Ambrose could be left to his own devices to have his match with Seth Rollins. And it wasn't in jeopardy. Because we had to put John Cena in the storyline. Believe me, I wish Brock was around. But I am of the mindset, you stay the course. You keep that belt on him until WrestleMania. Do not panic. Do not change plans. Do not fuck this up. Because when WrestleMania rolls around, he'll have a couple more matches under his belt. Whoever he wrestles at the Rumble, which I'm going to get to in a little bit. And whether it's Daniel Bryan, Roman Reigns, Batista, whoever they put in that ring against him, as long as it's not John Cena, God forbid, it's going to be a bigger match. It's going to be a bigger deal when Brock drops that belt. I don't, I don't really understand what people are expecting. If Brock was on television every single week, do you, do you think he would be wrestling? Do you actually want to see Brock Lesnar in some random handicap match or six-man tag on Raw every single week to where by week three he won't mean jack shit? Is that what people want? Would it be enough for him to just show up and wave and say hello and wink and then leave? I mean, what, what do people expect? I assume these are people who just didn't want to put the belt on Brock in the first place. But... I don't know what people are expecting. If he's on television every week, what do you expect him to do? He's not going to wrestle. I agree. They should at least tape some vignettes. Tape him back home in Minnesota. Tape him training. You know what you could do with Brock Lesnar? He's such a good... 
you know, he comes off as this smug douchebag, this guy that is so hateable, like he's so above the rest of us. Why not tape some vignettes of him with Paul Heyman out in the town? He's out at a steakhouse. Like TMZ got them outside of a steakhouse one day. I think it was after Brock won the belt at SummerSlam. It might have been that night, actually. And they caught them coming out of a steakhouse. That's the kind of place I would expect to see Brock Lesnar. He'd be in there, down in a big T-bone, right? Take a camera crew and just show him, like, living the life. Everywhere he goes, he's got that belt with him. Heyman's holding it, or he's got it on the seat next to him. And he's just being a dick to the waiter. He's being a dick to everybody. He's the conqueror. He's the king. He's living the life of Riley, this guy. You know, you could do stuff like that. I don't know why they haven't. Again, don't blame Brock. If if, if they called him and said, hey, listen, we're going to fly a camera crew out to your home in Minnesota. We want to follow you around. We want to tape a few segments with you. We'll send Paul out there. What do you think Brock's going to say? No. He'll be like, all right, do whatever you want. Send him down. So, again, it's, it's WWE's lack of, of creative when it comes to what to do with this guy that you should be upset about because there's plenty of stuff they could be doing with Brock Lesnar that doesn't include him being on Raw in the ring every single week. And they just they don't have any ideas. They don't know what to do. They're too busy booking bullshit celebrity guests and putting midgets in alligator costumes as though people actually want to see that, as though there's a demand for that kind of entertainment. Apparently, that's what we want to see. We don't want to see Brock Lesnar. We want to see Mini Gator and El Torito and 60-year-old grandmothers smashing wine bottles over each other's asses. That's what we want to see. That's what Monday Night Raw is all about. So I hold them accountable for this. It's not Brock's fault at all. There's plenty they could be doing, and they're not. So blame WWE. 